Hey, what is going on guys? Welcome back to another PS4 and PS5 jailbreak news update. I'm going to be doing another roundup of news topics because I've been so focused with tutorials over the past week and a half with all of the new stuff with the 11.0 jailbreak. So what I'll do in this video is I'm going to be going over a lot of the improvements that have been made to the 11.0 jailbreak, a lot of new projects and updates to existing projects, as well as we'll touch on some of the issues people are having with this exploit. And of course, we will also talk about where the PS5 stands right now with this new jailbreak. So let's go ahead and dive into it right here. So to start off with, I did do a full guide on the Raspberry Pi method. So you can use a Raspberry Pi to run the jailbreak for the PS4. Now this project has been improved quite a bit since I initially covered it. So quite a few improvements. Luckily, the installation is still more or less the same. So you don't really have to worry about uh, the steps being very different if you follow the tutorial. Essentially, you just have more commands that you need to copy and paste into PuTTY once you remote into the Raspberry Pi to get the script set up. So once you get to that stage, instead of copying the two commands that I copied, you just copy all of these commands here and paste them into PuTTY. You can paste them all in one big bulk and then press enter and it will just run through each command one by one. Two of the big improvements that have been made here, in fact, three big improvements that have been made. Uh, one of them is that there's now a web server, so you can access it on your PS4 or on the computer. You can just go to pppwn.local once you have everything set up, and then that will give you access to the web server where you can do things like restart the script or restart the Raspberry Pi, shut down the Raspberry Pi. You can also adjust your network configuration, some of the settings like switching between the Python and C++ version choosing a different network interface, all of that. Plus, there's also a new option for payloads. So if you have any payloads that you can put on a USB drive inside a payloads folder on a USB drive, plug that USB into the Raspberry Pi, and then the Raspberry Pi can serve those payloads through that web server to your PS4. You just have to have the bin loader server enabled in Gold Hen, and then you can go into the payload section and your payloads on the USB will show up. You can select them and load them directly onto the PS4. So another very handy option. The other big improvement to this is that it can also give your PS4 internet access through PPPoE so that you don't have to change your network settings on your PS4 after you've ran the jailbreak in order to get access to the internet. So when you're setting the script up, it will actually ask you if you want your PS4 to connect to the internet. If you say yes, it can give you the default PPPoE user ID and password, which is just PPP. If you enter that as the ID and password on the PS4, then once the jailbreak has successfully loaded, the Raspberry Pi will then share its internet connection with the PS4 using PPPoE, and that way you don't have to adjust the internet settings on the PS4. As soon as the jailbreak has loaded, your PS4 will then have internet access being shared by the Raspberry Pi, and you'll be able to use the homebrew store and any other applications that require the internet. So those are some major improvements that have been made there to the Raspberry Pi method. I still love my LG TV method where you can just press a button on the remote control and load the jailbreak from your LG TV. If you haven't heard about that, then I'll leave a link to my full guide in the video description. So there's been some improvements to both versions. You've got the version from ZOS here, uh, which had some issues with the install script that I believe have been fixed now. And it looks like he's also added support for Arch64 based TVs as well as ARMv7. So, you know, this is another good one that you can try. And then there's the one that I used in the video as well, which has also received a few updates recently uh, for various different improvements. So I will go ahead and leave my guide to this down in the video description. It's still my favorite way of loading the jailbreak as of right now. So next, we also have a Docker version. So if you have anything that can run Docker or you have anything running Docker, then you can potentially get the exploit running through that. Haven't tested this myself, but um, it looks like it's pretty much all ready to go there. So I'll leave that one linked below too. And we also have a version for OpenWRT. Uh, I haven't actually tried this one myself, but I was able to get the actual uh, exploit running on a router, one of my Fritzbox routers, which is an ARM v7 based uh, system. So I was actually able to get it running on that router. I set it up so that I can just press the WPS button on the router itself and it will run the script. And I've also, of course, got it set up remotely. So when you log into the web panel, you can also enable the script remotely from there. So any device that remotes in from the web panel will be able to access it and run the script. But it's handy that just having the button on the router itself that you can press, and then it will just flash red as it's actually trying to run the script. And once the script loads successfully, 
uh, the red light will disappear and you'll get a solid green on the WPS button and that means it has successfully loaded the jailbreak. It's almost like what can't we run the jailbreak on at this point? Routers, TVs, computers, everything, pretty much anything you can run the jailbreak on as long as you can get some kind of ethernet cable connected to it. We also have uh, improvements to the Windows version as well. There's this new Pone Windows Automated, which is, I guess, more designed to run on startup so that you can set it up so that it runs on startup and will automatically run the jailbreak, uh, which I will also leave linked below. I've also updated my own uh, tool to version 1.7.1 with the latest C++ implementation, uh, which kind of allows it to work better when you're actually booting the PS4 up. So when you turn on the PS4, you can literally have the scripts running before you even turn the PS4 on. And then when you turn the PS4 on, by the time it gets into the home menu, it will be about halfway through executing the script. So you can get it loaded faster when you're just turning uh, the console on, uh, which is pretty handy. So those are kind of all the big improvements that have been made, all of these different projects. And there's more coming out constantly for various different devices. So I'll try and leave all the links to all of these projects down in the video description. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on to some issues here. So there's been quite a lot of people, and I've noticed this in my comment section as well, that are having a really hard time trying to load this particular exploit where it just doesn't work. And the most common one I've seen is where it gets stuck on defeating kernel ASLR. And when it gets stuck on that particular section, there's a lot of people, they just cannot figure out a way to actually get it loaded. So there is a kind of debate going on at the moment as to whether or not this is just some kind of misconfiguration, some kind of broken link in the chain, or whether or not there are specific PS4 models that do not play nice with the exploit and just will not work. So Zeko posted on Twitter to the people that reported that their PS4s do not work with PPPWN, please take a photo of the Ethernet IC for future analysis. So it looks like there may be certain PS4 models that are just not working right now. And the reason why it's kind of hard to tell is that there's so many different links in the chain, so many little things that could be causing a problem that you need to kind of double, triple, quadruple check every component in the chain and rule all of that stuff out before you can then definitively say that it does not work on my PS4 model. You know, it could be there's some other link in the chain. It could be a bad USB to Ethernet adapter that causes an issue. It could be the Ethernet cable itself. You might need to swap out the Ethernet cable. You might need to try a different USB drive that has the payload on it, making sure that it's the right payload for the right firmware that's on there and it's named correctly and the USB drive's in the correct format and all of that stuff. There's so many different variables, trying with different computers, trying with different operating systems, Linux versus Windows, trying the Python version of the script versus the C++ version. You've got to basically try all of that stuff to actually rule out any of that stuff causing an issue so that you can actually truly determine that you perhaps have a PS4 model that does not work with the exploit. And whether or not that means it will ne never work with the exploit remains to be seen. It might just be the case of that the exploit script needs to be tweaked for specific models. We'll have to wait and see on that. But if you've ruled everything else out, then perhaps you can contact Zeko and uh, you know give him your PlayStation 4 model so that he can compile a list of the PS4s that seem to have these particular issues. Now, one last thing on PS4, there's quite a lot of homebrew apps that are working straight out of the box on 11.0 and more that are being ported to work on 11.0. We got the PS4 Explorer from Lappy now working on 11.0. We already had the homebrew store, the PS4 Cheats Manager was working fine. Items Flow mostly works, although there are a couple of things that need to be fixed that Lightning Mods is working on and will be fixed very soon. And then on top of that, Lightning Mods has also offered to add a new feature into Items Flow that would allow you to download official game patches for your retail games. This is a feature that we actually lost. We used to have this in a homebrew app called the Patch Installer by 0x199. However, a while ago it stopped working and it's not been fixed. So we've, we've kind of lost access to this feature for a long time. If Lightning Mods uh, would be willing to actually add that feature, uh, he's had a lot of votes asking for that feature, so hopefully he will implement it. And that would be very, very useful to have that feature back, uh, this time in Items Flow instead of a separate app. So anyway, that's basically everything I've got there for the PS4. Obviously, there's more things. There's always more things coming out for 11.0 right now. But let's touch on the PS5 for a second. So of, of course, we know that this jailbreak, this exploit does work on the PS5. The PS5 is vulnerable to it. That's been confirmed for a long time. 
The issue is that there's a lot of extra security measures that the PS5 implements that makes it much harder to get this exploit up and running. You've got things like uh, kernel ASLR, which is implemented in a much more secure manner, I believe, on PS5 compared to PS4. You've got SMAP slash SMEP, kernel CFI, which is got control flow integrity, I think, and execute only memory. You've got all of these protection measures that are implemented on the PS5 that make it significantly harder to implement any kind of exploit. That's the hurdle that has to be gotten over right now. So Spectre had a bit of a bleak outlook on this. He said that the Flow's latest RCE won't easily be adapted to PS5. PS4 is much weaker in terms of mitigations, which played a part in allowing a remote exploit without user land code execution. PS5 is different. Uh, SMAP plus CFI make this much harder to do. Uh, execute only memory also plays a role even if cfi were a non-issue you can't easily get gadgets to rop with either it might not be possible but a new strategy would be needed and you'd need to go for read write you'd also likely need user land code execution i wouldn't expect anything soon so yeah he's kind of showing a bit of a bleak outlook on this which is fair enough there's a lot of extra protection measures implemented in the ps5 it may take quite a while before we see an exploit with this. Now, the part that's interesting here is that he says you would likely need user land code execution, which would mean using a user land exploit chained with the pwn exploit. I'll just call it pwn exploit for now. So if we take the user land exploit chained with the pwn exploit, then maybe we could get it working there. But the problem is the latest user land exploit is the Blu-ray drive exploit from the flow, which only works up to 7.61. So that would lower the highest firmware that the exploit would run on on the PS5 down to 7.61 if that was the case. Although we don't know yet, this is still speculation. It might work just standalone over the network like it does on the PS4. And if they could get that working, then it could still work up to 8.02, which would be the desired outcome. So that is Spectre's take on it. Uh, there have been a few developers that are looking into this so far. There's a couple of fairly substantial developers, exploit devs who are looking into this although they've not really stated whether or not they are going to release it after they discover it, because some of these developers are developers who may have not released certain things in the past. So we'll have to wait and see on that. We also have Zeko saying that his PS5 friend seems to be close to achieving arbitrary read writes with the Flow's bug. Let's hope for the best. But again, that could be still far in the future, just because you may think he's close to getting read write with the Flow's bug. There may be other hurdles that they've not run into yet that could potentially slow them down. So I don't want to get people too hyped up based on a tweet like that. But yeah, anyway, either way, there is progress being made. There are developers in the scene that are working on this. I know of at least three that have, that have been looking into it, but I wouldn't necessarily expect anything in the near future. If something comes out soon, that would be a surprise to me. But hopefully, I did say even in my older videos about upcoming jailbreaks, I said it might be the end of this year or later uh, in the worst cases. Uh, I also hear people complaining about, you know, there's not any development going on in the PS5. The PS5 is dead. Uh, what I find funny about that is the fact that people were saying the opposite about the PS4 just a few months ago. Um, it, this, it just completely flipped. And that just tends to be the case here. Like if a new jailbreak comes out for the PS4, then the devs need to port their homebrew and their payloads and everything over to that jailbreak. So they're going to be focusing on the PS4 right now. And then once that dies down, they'll go back to PS5. Just like when the PS5 jailbreak came out and we got Ostrowski's Lib Hijacker, where we could actually run homebrew and stuff, the devs started porting things to PS5 and they were less focused on PS4. So it's mostly the same devs that are on PS4 and PS5. So they're going to flip flop between the two systems, depending on what needs work at that particular time. Once that's done, I think they'll head back to PS5 and be working on that, especially people like Lightning Mods. So yeah, we may be in a little bit of a stagnant period on PS5, but that will flip fairly soon. So anyway, that's it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And once again, I'll hopefully see you guys in the next video.